After collecting cards for about a year, you may have noticed your collection has changed. It's gotten a bit chunky. Uh, you can say it's bulking up. Last year, we sorted that hot mess you called the collection into an actual neat collection. However, things have gotten too big. It's starting to look like you have more cards than your local game store. It's becoming chory again. What's the point of splitting up my foils? Why do I need a binder for my extra deck? All good questions! And you're right, there is a simpler method I'd like to call the minimalist collection, and that's what we're gonna explore today. In this episode of Tuber Card Collection Downsizing. Again, why sort the collection? Are you judging my shoebox, Tom? Yes. But the reason has not changed. You're saving time and money, and those things are priceless. Maybe except the money, because that can be quantified. But for time, you're minimizing card searching, you can save time building your decks, and you are aware of your own collection. For money, you can sell off all the extra cards that have become stonks, especially near the ban list. You can turn in your extra bulk into the store for cash, and you can stop yourself from buying stuff you already own. And I think that's really the biggest point here. In the previous episode, I gave you guys the standard player method, which is more or less good for up to two people. But because of that, your cheapskate friend is borrowing your stuff all the time. And in this version, we're cutting him out because if they want something, buy it yourself, Carl. The theory behind this one is quite simple. We're just gonna keep what you need, keep it organized, and also keep it compact. We're calling it the three... We're, we're, we're calling it knock. You know, uh, neat, organized, compact. Like, uh, nobleman of cross out. And the oversized collection is such a bad look. Like, trust me, she won't be impressed if your cards are spilling into the living room. So for this video, we're gonna start with the equipment and I'm gonna explain the different sorting methods for different kinds of cards. Sorting for value, sorting for bulk, and sorting to dump your stuff at the store. Now, I know some of you guys already have your collection kinda sorted, but also wanna cut out cheapskate Carl out of your life, so you can apply this as well. So let's gear up for success. These were the items we used last year, but this year with the minimalist method, we're going to need less of these things. In fact, we're cutting out a few of them right now. One, we're cutting out the one row box. Single row boxes are no longer needed. Two, the three ring binders are also no longer needed and they get pretty pricey as you keep buying more and more of them. And three, the three by three slot pages by association. Without the binders, these are also no longer needed and they're gonna be replaced with something much better. Even for the minimalist method, you're still going to need some essentials such as four and five row boxes. These are great for your storage and for four row boxes. Some of them even fit into Ikea Calyx shells, but I don't know exactly which brand it is. And once again, you're going to need the penny sleeves because they do protect your cards in these boxes from sliding around and getting whitening on the edges. You can keep your cards packed in nicely together. And I guess one other fun fact is that you can also pick the cards out by pinching the penny sleeves themselves and you don't have to worry about accidentally scraping the top of the card with your fingernail. And finally, a new essential on this list is a sorting tray. You might have seen these at your local game store. You might have seen the staff using it to sort their collection or whatever collection they just bought. It helps them kind of keep things organized and if you have one and you have the space for it then you could put all the piles of cards on your table and sort them into neat little piles before you have to put them back into your collection these next two items i designed them myself first item is box dividers I found that searching for cards in these white boxes, they take forever, especially when they're all bricked up together. You can't see the cards. So I designed them so that they would split up your boxes into a nice alphabetized section. Essentially, it's just there to help you find the beginning and end of every letter. It really speeds things up when you are looking for certain cards or you're, when you're putting stuff back in your collection. You can find these on mstmerch.com and each of these units, they come with the orange, green, and purple per unit. So you get three times the letter, one for each color. Also, we have the latest addition to the divider family. We have the tab subdividers. In a lot of card games, the naming schemes of certain archetypes or certain types of cards, they begin with the word the. And do you include it as a part of cards that start with the letter T or you don't? Well, this makes it a lot easier. So these tab subdividers, they are blank tabs that you can just write on them yourself and insert them into the box. They're sized basically the same as the box dividers. The tab subdivider is there to help flag specific areas of your collection and speed up your search and personalize your collection. And the last item, your personal binder. 100% get these side loading binders because they are perfect for your trades, your most valuable stuff, and your personal collection. Stuff that you like having around, they're not going into these white boxes. Nobody does that. No one. And you want the side load because if someone puts your binder in upside down, you won't have to worry about your cards pouring out and getting crushed like this card. Just imagine if you lost value equal to your child's college tuition just because you didn't get a proper binder. 
and to support some of my local favorites aside from mstmerch.com. Check out Mana Moon. Amanda LaPalm's artwork is incredible and looks good on any accessory she puts it on, including binders. And also shout outs to our partners at Imperium Duelist. They've sent me some side loading binders with zippers and that zipper is just nice extra insurance so the cards won't fall into the bag. Now that you're geared up, let's look into sorting your cards. There's really only three filters that you need to know. One, sorting for value. Two, sorting for bulk collection and staples. This is essentially your library. And three, sorting for straight bulk. Let's just summarize the high value cards and the straight bulk because this is the same for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're standard or a minimalist. Let's just get this one out of the way. Value cards, they are the easiest. They go in your trade and sell binders. They have value to you because they're collectible. They have value in the market due to meta relevance or they have value in their utility because they're just a timeless card that will see play time and time again. These cards you can just put aside into a different pile for your binders. Now, there's no limit to how many you keep. This one is just based on preference. But if you value everything the same and you have a bunch of cards that you're just unwilling to let go of, uh, then you're probably a cardboard hoarder. Stop it. Get some help. For pure bulk, grab two, four, or five row boxes and dump all of your non-foils into one and dump all of your foils into the other. You don't have to care about whether it's right side up, upside down. Just dump it all up, fill it up, and return it to the store. Rather than return, trade it into the store and get your money's worth. When you're trading in your bulk, if you like the store, of course, keep it as neat as possible. But if you don't like the store, they have offended you in some way, shape, or form. Last time I mentioned, hey, make sure that every card is forward and backward in the entire box so that when they go through it, they take extra time. Yes, you can even make it messier by making it upside down, right side up. It just gets really annoying. And it takes about three extra seconds per card that they have to turn over just to look at it, just to put it away. So with that being said, how much extra time do you waste? It's about three seconds per card. And say that some of them are regularly straight, say we're only checking about three quarters of it there's about in a 5,000 count box 3,750 cards that will be messed up times that by three seconds and you're wasting a total of about three hours of your time if you're really that petty but i don't recommend doing it be nice to your game store guys and now that brings us back to the bulk collection we mentioned the rules before it was knocked need organized and compact these rules are going to help you define how many copies of cards you're going to keep for need, you only need one playset of any given card for yourself. That's the maximum number of copies you can have in a deck, regardless of bandless. I'm going to have the exception for staples because I'm not a believer of breaking your main deck just so that you can put staples into a different deck. You can have multiple different decks and staples. These, you never really can get enough of it. Now for organize, this is where you get the additional copy, a plus one copy, mainly just for indexing and holding a spot in your boxes. Sometimes you don't have enough, you're gonna have to take the index copy out just because you need the full playset, and that's totally fine. But keeping the one extra copy makes it easier for you to put your cards back when you're done. The main differentiating rule is keeping it compact. The standard method separated the foils and non-foil collection into separate boxes and considered them as separate cards. But this time, the foils and non-foils are merged. The cards essentially play the same, they have the same effect, and we don't need to split them apart because we are keeping them for use. The foils and non-foils will count towards the same playset limit under the first rule, and it's up to you if you want to prioritize keeping the higher rarity cards and selling the rest off, or keeping the lowest rarity and selling the shinies off. There's no real point in splitting up the foil and non-foil for something you're keeping, because all it's going to do is double the amount of work and space required to store them, and remember, reprints. They're going to happen. If they add a foil boosted rarity to a common that you already own, that's just more wasted time for you, and keeping it compact makes things easy to find and easy to expand. So I applied this to my own collection and really just trimmed out all the extra cards I had literally thousands of cards just extra waiting to be converted back into money in terms of space previously using the standard method i had nine binders for the extra deck five common boxes and three foil boxes and a box of cards that you can ignore mainly just vanillas after downsizing to the minimalist way i now still have eight boxes but i don't have those nine binders anymore which is equivalent to three boxes worth of space now, in the previous method, I sorted all the special monsters into their own binders, like Rituals, Fusions, Synchros, Xyz, Links, all of those, they were placed into their own individual binders. But that got really annoying as the collection constantly expanded and re-slotting them became a huge chore. So I decided to just put them back into boxes, just keep them sleeved together, and it's just a lot easier in general, and it actually takes up a lot less space. So from the 10 binders that I previously had that were just mega full, now 
Now they fit loosely into two boxes. Honestly, there was not that much. In fact, there's a ton of empty spaces in those boxes, but at least it makes it more expandable and I don't have to worry about finding more space for these cards. Previously, when they were in their binders, I did split them up into their levels, ranks, and ratings, and went alphanumeric there. But back into the box, I just didn't feel like that was necessary because I'd literally be doing the alphanumeric system on each of the levels and ranks and ratings, making me go through the system like 20 times, and that's just totally not worth my time. So I just clumped them all back up together, and I'm sure I can use Google to help me look for specific cards. And that's it. I've recalibrated my collection to, from the standard to the minimalist collection mode. Now, there are other other things to actually look at when it comes to sorting, such as your binders, binder building, all that fun stuff. But we'll save it for next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button. It really helps. And if you help subscribe, we're going to get to 100k very soon. Thanks to you guys. And if you guys want to pick up some sweet box dividers or some subdividers, check it out at mstmerch.com. You're not going to find it anywhere else. And every brick of those dividers come with 90 and all the subdividers, they come with 80. So happy sorting. And I'm going to go back to playing Yu-Gi-Oh! So have fun and I'll see you in the next one.